Hi, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a staging site or a clone of your WordPress website. So the first thing we need to do is log in to our Plus control panel. You're going to need a WordPress toolkit to clone it. Um, Plesk has a WordPress toolkit built in. RuPal offers that. Uh, you can also find some cPanel hosting that offers a WordPress toolkit solution as well. But for now, I'm going to be using Plesk. So let's go ahead and click our WordPress uh, and load the WordPress toolkit. And we'll go to our demo site. And let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. So here's our demo site. We're going to create a clone of this. And it's very simple. We actually, if we want to create a staging site, it's called clone in WordPress toolkit. So I'm going to click clone and we can choose a subdomain, uh, which it automatically creates, uh, or you can use an existing subdomain and that's up to you, but I'm going to create a brand new one. So I'm going to call it staging. That's a good name. And I'm going to leave the, the database name defaulted and I'm going to click start. So what it's going to do is it's going to copy the files and copy the database over to the staging site. It also creates a subdomain which uh, for your staging site as well. If your site is large, if your site is about a gig, if your database is about a gig, it's going to take a while for this cloning process to happen because, you know, a WordPress site that has a gig it's gonna take a while. So expect it to take 20, 30 minutes sometimes um, for those bigger WordPress staging. Um, so yeah, it's actually, it's just copying the files, copying the database, and then it's actually gonna configure the URL to be staging.rupeldemo.com. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It, you don't have to change any URLs. You don't have to copy any plugins over. Um, you don't need anything. You just click a one click button, choose the subdomain name and you're good to go. And it creates a staging site. So this process probably is going to take another minute, um, but it creates the staging site in two to three minutes. Uh, and I think the database is around, you know, 50, 40, 50, 60 megs, megabytes. So, if you have a website that's larger in database size or a lot of files, it's going to take longer and that's okay. Uh, you can let it work in the background as well. So there we go. It took around three minutes to complete uh, the entire process, three or four minutes. Uh, but my staging site is ready. And so let's check it out. Let's uh, open, hover over this, click open the website and it is not working. So Let's check out why. Oh, so I know why it's not working. Um, the reason is, is because I actually do not have my DNS controlled by Plesk. Uh, and you'll see this right here. So this is a good example. If you are not using the root pal name servers or uh, your hosting's name servers, and you use an outside name server, a provider like Cloudflare, which I'm on, uh, in Plesk, it's going to say your website's offline because it doesn't resolve to the IP address. So what we have to do is we have to log into Cloudflare, our DNS provider, and we have to create an A record uh, for that staging.rootpaldemo.com. So I'm going to go ahead and log in Cloudflare and show you how to do that. All right, so I'm in Cloudflare and I'm going to add that A record. So I'm going to go to DNS and we're going to click for a record and we're going to call it staging and we're going to point it to the IP of the Plesk server and we're going to proxy it because we want it to be SSL. So if you have Google DNS managing your DNS for your domain name, but you're pointing to the server IP or you're using another CDN provider, um, I think Cloudberry's one, StackPath, there's a couple different ones out there that manage your DNS to increase your speeds globally. You're going to have to monitor and create an A record for these staging sites. If you're pointing directly to the name servers and you're using the Plus DNS, then you don't have to do anything because it automatically 
when it, it creates that uh, subdomain and the DNS populates. And so you, you don't have to do anything. It's just ready to go. Um, but because I'm using Cloudflare, I have to create, and you can see it right here, the staging.rupaldemo.com. Because I'm using Cloudflare, I have to put that A record. So now if we open up uh, our website in the web, boom, there you go. There's a clone. It automatically populated everything. I didn't have to change any config settings. I didn't have to copy the database over. It's all ready to go and I'm ready to start working. So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how to push from your staging site directly to your live site. So let's say we go into our staging site and um, we automatically log in through the WordPress toolkit. Uh, go ahead and log into our WordPress website, which boom, logs us in. And we go to the main dashboard and let's say we want to edit with Elementor and update some things on our website, right? Let's say we're going to change this RootPal demo and we're going to call it RootPal live. And we're going to say the site is now live. And yeah, so we're going to click update. We're going to let Elementor update and it's updated. So the next thing we're going to do, um, we have our, we have our staging site. We made some changes. We did a bunch of stuff, you know, maybe we can move this over here, um, and move this over here, you know, switch, just make it, move it up a little bit and we can add images later or whatever. So I switched this over here, I added this, we're gonna update it. And yeah, I think that's enough changes we're gonna do on our staging site because we wanna push it to our live site. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head back over to the WordPress toolkit. We're gonna select our staging site where we made those changes and we're gonna click copy data. So copy data allows you to select a target which this is our main live website, which we want the changes to reflect. And the data to copy over, we're gonna copy the files and the database, and we're gonna replace files modified on target. Yes, we wanna replace the files. Let's say you only did some database changes. You know, you wanna copy the database only. Let's say you just wanna copy the files only. I don't know why you'd wanna do that. I mean, when you make changes to WordPress, you're obviously adding images, you're updating content or you know, text. So you're going to be doing both. Um, here's an important thing you need to, you need to realize, uh, when your database database tables that we're going to choose to copy over. So post meta posts, user meta users. So I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to leave this unchecked because I do want my changes, um, so the post made on the posts, so let's say you're, you know, editing the posts, um, which is a blog post. If you, you're going to have to leave this unchecked. So it copies all the data over, right? So you're going to want to leave this unchecked. If you're going to be updating or adding posts or, you know, you're, you created a user account on, uh, your staging site and you do want that user account to be moved over because you, that user account created posts or articles or whatever, right? you have to leave this unchecked because this, if, if this, if this, if this is left checked, it's not going to copy your post. It's not going to copy your new account. You want everything to be moved over, right? So I'm going to leave this unchecked. Most of the times you want this unchecked. If you're an experienced WordPress developer, um, maybe you can mess around with this and select specific tables if you know it, but the best thing is just click all tables, uncheck that. And if you want to create a restore point, you can. So what this does, it will create a restore point just in case uh, any of the changes go wrong. Something goes wrong, you have a lot, you know, copy of the restore of your of your website, uh, your live website. So, you know, just in case something goes wrong, I don't care, but I would leave that checked just in case. But 
I honestly don't care. I think my changes are minuscule. So I'm gonna click start and it's actually gonna copy the files over that have been changed. It's gonna copy the database over and it's gonna check the website health. So this process is pretty quick. It could take up to, you know, a couple minutes to, you know, 30 minutes, depending on how big your database is over or database sizes, how big, how many files you're copying over, you know, how much things you've done, because it does have to sync and check and then copy the data over again. But, you know, see the files copied over pretty quickly. It's copying the database over right now. And yeah, so we'll see if our changes did get published using this copy data tool. So it's all done. The process took about two minutes, no more than two minutes, um, very quick. So I'm gonna close out and we're actually gonna check our RootPal demo website to see if our changes took effect. So this is our staging.rootpaldemo.com. We're gonna click open website and for the big finale, yay, RootPal is live and we could see our changes down here did reflect, boom. We didn't do anything, no updating URLs, no plugins, nothing. Your changes reflected and you're all good to go. So it's just, sorry, right here. Um, refresh that, it's gonna say RuPaul's live because we added that to be live. So yeah, I mean, it's that easy. And, um, it's it's simple and you don't need to use plugins so word that's wordpress toolkit that's how you clone a staging site copy the data over um it's very simple easy to use and makes developing very very easy to push your changes live but that's it i'll be making more videos on the wordpress toolkit so stay tuned